Them oh. legs right there belong to me. <laughs> what legs? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Man down. Run it back again. That's not. Hey, that's not run it back. Let's run it back. Here we go again. Oh, you up there. And you ain't hurt yourself at all. I got one scratch on the side of my knee. That was me falling off my roof. I'll be oh, so wow. ready to play. <laughs> Must be playing. I didn't even know how that showed on there, but anyway. <laughs> uh, what up? What up? What up? How you boys and girls doing today? I'm your man RL. Welcome to GV TV, Good Vibes Television. I'm a little off today. Um, over the last week or so, a lot has been going on in the world, and uh. I normally say good morning, but um, there's really not too much of any good going on in the world today. So before we start, I would like for us to give a uh, 15 second uh, moment of silence for um, our fallen brother, Mr. George Floyd. And I guess that's 15 seconds. We're back. Uh, like I said, I'm your boy, RL, and welcome to GBTV. I am here tonight with my uh, counterpart, as always, Mr. DJ PRS1. And the lovely Miss Savanye. With the little princess ways. Hey, look, so we have uh, some special guests on tonight. Um, I'm real geeked about tonight. Tonight's a big, big show, and I love the fact this is going to be about black entrepreneurship um i'm gonna let miss savvy go ahead and introduce everybody uh i see i see my favorite person at the bottom but i ain't gonna say anything i spaz what's up with you baby <laughs> that's good i want to welcome our guest tonight um these are some powerful people that we have here tonight they're um black entrepreneurs they have their own brand so we're doing a special show for them tonight so I want to introduce um, first Miss Jonte Fisher. She's the CEO and founder of Bubbles Galore. And then we have our return guest, always special, Miss Faz. She's the CEO and founder of Defective Arts. And we have Mr. Antoine Guy, Antoine Guy, CEO and founder of Major Figures. We rocking his hat and shirt tonight. Check him out. Check him out. And then last but not least, Mr. Tyree Ellis, CEO and founder, a true um, struggle, a pearl right there. And I rock that also. So, you know, check them out. So we're going to start tonight with the lovely Miss Fan. Tell us about yourself, Miss Fan. Tell us about your brand. Tell us what you do. And also make sure you tell us, um, the listeners and the followers where they can find you at so if they want to purchase something from you. Um, so my name is Fez. Um, it's oxymoronic for spreading peace, awareness, and zeal. Um, I wear many hats, as you all know. Um, I'm a holistic health practitioner. That's like taking over my life now. It's, um, it's, it's very near and dear to my heart. So, but I'm also an artist, um, a visual designer. I have a pearl and accessory line as well. Um, graphic design. Like I dabble in a little bit of everything when it comes to art. Um, and then, like I said, I also am a holistic health practitioner, holistic health coach, art coach, therapist. So I do a little bit of everything. Um, right now, the main thing that's taking my time, um, like I'm still trying to calm down as y'all can see, but I, I sell fruit infused sea moss. Um, and I infuse my sea moss with, uh, Reiki and crystal energy to boost the medic medicinal properties of it. Um, and that's like my main thing right now because there's just so much going on with this Corona. So I've just been trying to assist people with boosting their immune systems holistically. And I've actually helped a couple of people recover from coronavirus, um, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's what I do. Um, but I'm a lover of all things. I, I'm, I'm aware of all hats. I've done many events with, 
uh, Savanya. I host a uh, MS support program at Hopkins and I'm sponsored by Hopkins, endorsed by National MS Society. I assist individuals with uh, managing and rehabilitating themselves from MS holistically by managing um, with medicinal treatment and balancing it out with holistic traditional remedies as well. I've been um, caring and rehabilitating myself for Almost five years now, I was at a place where I couldn't walk, talk, drive, any of that. And this is me now. Um, so, yeah, that's that's most of what I do. I'm all over the place, scatterbrained. Um, so, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Defective Art, no underscores, just all spelled out, Defective Art. That's my art page. And then my healing page is She Heals, She, period, Heals, E, the three is an E, and Heals. Um, I'm soon to be back on Facebook because everybody been on my ass about it. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's me. All right, Miss Jonte, you're up next. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. Let us know. Yes, ma'am. Let us know about your brand, what you're doing, what you got going on, um, how you um got into what you're doing right now, and let the uh, followers know where they can find you if they want to purchase, reach out to you. Okay, well, hi guys. My name is Jean Tay. I'm the owner of Bubbles Galore. And um, I started my company because of when the corona started. I always felt like there was nothing fun to wash your hands with. Like you always have just like a, you know, regular soap pump or a bar of soap. So I decided to make something that would be fun, smelled good, and it wasn't that expensive. So I actually have some soaps here I was going to show you guys. So this is something here. So as you can see, it's a bar of soap and it has feet inside. So you can use this for like favors or whatever. Um, in the inside, the feet are shea butter and the outside is glycerin. And then like this diamond right here, you can use this for bridal showers. Um, but this is a favor. You can use it for that. And in the inside, there's an actual ring inside. So once you're done with the soap, you have something to put on your finger. (laughs) Oh, that's cool. So yeah, so that's why I started. Um, but yeah, um, I officially um, quit my job on Friday. Yes. A full-time yes. entrepreneur. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Cool. So yeah. that's like really huge for me. Um, I'm trying to um, make a different um, a difference, and I'm trying to show my children you don't need a job. You, you can follow your dreams, and yeah. But I um, hopefully I make it. I guess and. Um, what else was I going to say? That's pretty much it. <laughs> Let everybody know where they can follow you. Oh, so on Instagram, I'm at bubbles underscore galore underscore underscore. And I just um, made my website live today. So you can go to bubblesgalorem.com. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> All right. So, um, now, at, at, at that um, website, is that where we can purchase some of your stuff? You can. All right, all right. Just we got to make sure our viewers know. Kit. So it's um free shipping. So just put free ship. So it's like gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So next we got a Mr. Antoine guy. So Mr. Antoine Antoine guy, welcome to the show. Let us know what you got going on. Let us talk, let us know how you got into your business, and let the um audience know and our listeners know how to find you. Well, my name is Antoine guy. I started the Major Figures of Pearl, literally like four months ago. It's doing pretty good for itself, you know. Um, I always wanted to do a clothing line that's my own brand because, you know, you, you got all these different clothing lines out here and you buy a lot of people's stuff like polo, you know, true religion, stuff like that. But I said I just wanted one day I want to walk somewhere and have my own stuff on, you know, and that's mm-hmm. why I started my brand. Like I said, it's been going for four months now. It's doing pretty good. You know, I do other things. I'm a full-time truck driver. I got my lawn care service and I got a couple vending machines. So I try to do a lot. And uh, every year I challenge myself to come up with a different business opportunity, you know, Mm -hmm. for more legal money, you know, Mm -hmm. so therefore, you know, put myself in a good situation. But um, yeah, I mean, you can follow me at Major Figures on Facebook, Major Figures underscore on Instagram. And as you can see, y'all got the nice shirts and hats on, looking real good. You know, I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, I'm trying. That's all. You know, I want to keep it brief. 
You ain't trying. You doing it, bruh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Four months strong, you know. I'm pretty. That's I'm doing pretty good. Gotta love what you do. That's right. All right. So last but not least, we got Mr. Tyrese Ellis with that true struggle. So let us know what you got going on. You know, how you came up with your brand. And let the audience know. How can they find you? That's what's up. When I started the brand in 2014, when I was actually going through a true struggle, losing my business that I had down on 24th Charles Street, and I was losing it. And the name came about like, I was having a conversation with one of my cousins who just came home from the feds. He was like, yo, you, you look good behind the desk in the suit and all that or whatever. I'm like, man, look, this ain't really all what it's cracked up to be. I'm losing everything. You know what I'm saying? He was like, but you're the only one from the hood that did something different. So over the conversation, just to skim past that or whatever, whatever, I was letting know it's just struggling, trying to keep I'm it together. And, and when I said that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, it kind of like registered in my head, like, you know what, I'm just going, I'm going to create a design and I'm going to wear it on my chest because even though mm-hmm. I'm facing a struggle right now, this ain't my destiny. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm going to wear it proudly because I know that's just not where I'm going to end up at. You know what right. I'm saying? So basically, we just represent, you know what I'm saying, the struggle and overcoming the struggle because... When you're on your way to success, like the struggle is a step that you got to go to on your way to the top. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So from there, it led to, um, I was it was like a cheap way for me to stay fly back then when I was like yeah. fucked up in the game. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It was like I owned a company. I was doing graphic design and t-shirts. So I owned everything. So I had it right here. Why not just go and put it together and wear right. it? Wore down Mobies. They loved it. I'm like, wait a minute. I might be on something. You know right. what I'm saying? One thing turned to another. They're like, you got business cards? I'm like, maybe I should make some. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I made some business cards, and next thing you know, I just started pursuing it and realized mm-hmm. that from my struggle, getting creative in my struggle, I had turned it into something real brilliant. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So from there, what I did was just make sweat suits. My brother got involved. My brother paid for the trademark. He became my partner. He locked up right now. I'm doing a lot of time. One of my biggest dreams is to make it here and to get him home. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So... We facing that every day, but from there I came up with my own cologne. So I got I got um cologne. It's called True. Uh, it's called I don't know if y'all can see it. It's a little just one of the old ones, but it's called True for him. And I got something that's called True for her. You know what I'm saying? That I, I made. Myself, you know what I'm saying? I made my. Right I did a couple uh, uh 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 smell tests to the you know to the people. It's like called proof of concept, like Damon John would say. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To see if people liked it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I sold a lot of it. You know what I mean? From there, we designing shoes, trying to get some shoes out there and stuff like that or whatever. And right now, we got a smart watch coming. You know what I'm saying? We got a smart okay. watch coming that do your temperature and everything else. We got a lot of things going on. You know what I'm saying? So we just push it. And right now, we got a lot of different distributors that's around Baltimore selling the masks. We got masks, got face masks. Cough one more damn time. I do all the time. Ah. We got uh, <laughs> six feet back, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? We got a whole bunch of cool designs. And we oh, just push you it. let me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> throw that arm. Throw that arm. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Right. Throw that arm sleeve. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we got yeah, it on the arm. That's right. We got, got it We got it right here. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. we're just pushing, man. It's a lot of things that we do, man. But it ain't just my hustle that keep me going. It's the books that I read behind the scenes. Books like The right. Secret. You know what I'm saying? Books yeah. like The Power of Broke by Damon John. You know what I'm saying? So it's the hustle, including everything else that I do, you know what I'm saying, that keep me pushing. And also... It allowed me to install it to others that want to do what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying, so that I can push them to get to the next level. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a little brief. It's going to be a long doc- documentary one day. Y'all going to be able to watch. It's going to be entertaining. You know what I mean? But it's going to be coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just stay tuned. And you can follow me yet on Instagram at True Struggle. That's it. you see, like, mm-hmm. the Lord, my little character guy, man. This is my special guy here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> guy right here. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And this came from a dream. That's a whole other story. I came up with this from a dream. Woke up and started sketching. But it's gonna be all in the documentary, man. Or, or maybe like on another Tuesday, I can break that down to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Man, you can make a cartoon card out of it, make a whole cartoon. Actually, it's man, it's, it's, listen, that's what he is. He's a cartoon character, but he yeah, represents but... the struggle. Like, look at him, you see his arm broke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. I didn't even notice you, that. He has a smile on his face. That's smile on his face. He's saying that, yeah, I done been through a little struggle, man, but I'm still standing strong. His fist pulled up, now you know I'm ready for the next round. And now that's right. he's fighting. That means whatever it is I done went through, they ain't gonna hold me down. Brothers, yeah. Yeah, brothers, shout support, brothers, that's right, right. Push, you feel me? That's what it's about, man. So it just represents everything that we're doing, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, can't you can't you tell that him and um, Logan hang out? That's that's yeah. Logan, that's my right hand. That's right, that's 7 p.m. That's yeah, right. That's right. And look, um, right. just so people know how to 
how to purchase anything, if they want to support it, whatever, it's www.treestruggle.com. And on Instagram, we live, you know what I'm saying, at Tree Struggle on Instagram. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you, you, thank you, That's what's up. I'm definitely trying to Hey, can I say something one time, though? What's up? Yes, sir. Ellis, tell me this feeling, because, I, I mean, I just want to express, I want to tell you my experience, how I felt. How do it feel when you're out somewhere and you see somebody with your sweatshirt on your hoodie or whatever? Oh, yeah, that's one Let me tell you this. I'm going to tell you before <laughs> that, then I'm going to get to that. I used right. to always want to see that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I just want to be driving. I just want to see it because people be telling me they be seeing people with my stuff on. This was years ago, but now every time I scroll on my timeline, I see it. Every time I walk outside, I get right. like at least 10 calls a day saying, yo, I'm seeing your mask everywhere. I'm seeing this everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it feel good. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, let me I'm, tell you mine. When you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought you was done. I'm going to tell you something else that's really important to me. The people that come on my team and become my distributors, what it make them become? Meaning like, like the people that like don't want to do what they don't. And want right. to be a part of the brand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The fact that I lead by example, the fact that people want to follow because they see something great happening. You know what right. I'm saying? And I just like to always put out there, if I could do it, you could do it. Yes, you know what I'm saying? I always, always give that power, that knowledge down to my folk, man. And I always, and we, we, we as one. I ain't no boss. We right. as one. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. We're together. That's right. And that's just how it is, man. But I do want to hear your story, man. So tell me. So, now, I'm, I'm going to keep it real brief. So just imagine I'm in a bar chilling, you know, drinking and having a good time. I'm playing pool. I'm shooting a shot. I look up. Damn. Yo, got my truck <laughs> <shirt> on. <laughs> I'm like, let me tell you. So you know yeah. you're more emotional because you had a couple of drinks and everything. You know what I mean? And then, like, my heart dropped. Like, damn. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. But nah, that's that's just, that was like the best experience I didn't had, you know what I mean, to doing this and it was like that that moment felt like it, it was priceless right, right. You know I mean? that was the best moment in the world yeah man i'm telling you man listen I, i've been there i've been there especially especially when like dc young fly common chico bing when all yep. i rock myself yep. like um yep. fades on love um big yep. friday i mean it's a ton of them you know what i'm saying like that all rock my jokes and when yeah. they rock it you know what i'm saying and, 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 and i don't pay them i don't pay them to do it I ask him, if you like it, support me. If you don't, I understand. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Not one of them ever turned me down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I'm going to get there. I mean, I'm four months in. I know you're on the way, man. I like yeah. actually yeah. my power, too, so we're going to link up. I like it. That's, that's, that's what I say. Like, you ain't trying. I like to drive. Like, you know I mean? We're going to definitely hook up. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Straight yeah, up. Definitely. Yeah. I'm just listening to y'all talk and that shit just really making me want to get back into because that was my thing. Like I said, I had a pearl and an accessory line and all that graphic design, all that shit was doing all of my sketching my own. Like, hey, you talk about your stuff. Like, it make me think about mine and even similar to how your, um, your thing is, you said true struggle. Like, yeah. my, 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 um, my logo came to me in a dream and I thought it was weird. You know what I'm saying? And I sketched that joint out, but it took me to go to graphic design school to be able to learn all the stuff. Cause I'm like, I don't want to keep paying all these people to do what I know I can learn how to do on my own. But right. it was like, I felt like when I got to the top and even the same thing, like had a couple celebrity clients, had people on lockdown. And I was like, damn, like yo said, seeing people on the street with my stuff on, like going really doing my thing. Mm -hmm. It was like, and that's came and took me out for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I started rehabilitating myself, I started drawing, like painting on canvas because it was less work. So it was like, I was able to get that art out that was inside of me, but yeah. I didn't have the the really like that that physical goal to be able to do all the stuff like do the design press it out do this do that you know what i'm saying yeah. so i just started i transitioned all that on canvas so it's like just hearing your story and then after that i kind of like slid from that and got more de dove more into healing and i felt like healing people was more important but now i'm working on a program to help kids be able to express themselves through, through art so that's how i got into art therapy and all that but just hearing y'all tell y'all stories it just make me feel like damn maybe you should really get back into your clothing line again because i missed that feeling you know what i'm saying right, like so yeah. like i'm just hearing y'all talk and it really got me in my feelings right now like dang yeah, i remember how that felt you know yeah. what i'm saying and it's like I got a shirt made by her, and um, I'm talking about that shirt that I you, uh, made for me last year. Said, oh yeah, yeah. Like I just told her what I wanted, and she rocked that thing out. Yeah. When I first yeah. met her, um, she was doing one of the um shows that I was in, and she left a photo. She left a um a painting, 
And I told her, I called up and was like, you're not getting this payment back. That payment <laughs> right. That payment she ain't just sent me the money like, you lost this, but it's sold now because I'm about right. to see where I need to spend right. my money to. Yeah. 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 Um, Hey, listen, just to touch on that real quick about the dream, man. I just want to show y'all. When I woke up from that dream, I couldn't find a pencil. First thing was, was a, uh, I don't know if y'all can see that. Is, is it blurry? Can y'all not see it? Yeah, it's kind of blurry. Kind of blurry. Yeah, I right, can't see it. But one day, yeah, what you got? I'm going to show you that little sketch. Yeah. <laughs> that thing, it, it looked crazy. Yeah. I mean, however it works, it don't even matter. Art is art. So at the yeah. end of the day, however you push it out is what you push out. Yeah, I done created stuff out of all types of you will never even think like that's that's what I pride myself on. Like my 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 um my brand is defective art because I create art out of the most untraditional things. You know what I'm saying? Even my clothing line, like some of it was just painting on stuff or heat press, but then I also like the the shirt I made for Savannah. Like I rip up denim, rip up all different types of print and stuff, and spikes yeah. and, and studs and paint and throw and glass yes. and mirror. I didn't cut myself all up creating stuff with like broken <laughs> glass and mirror. Like mm-hmm. yeah, I'm like into all that. Like art it's whatever come out is what come out but just like i said hearing y'all tell y'all story it just really got me in my feelings like yeah you need to really start doing that again and like create a balance between yeah you healing people but you know nurture that artistic side of yourself to you again and i'm trying to support both of y'all i'm definitely following y'all after this we all always link up together you know we got yeah. and, and her with the um the smell goods and the the um soaps and all, all that, you know. Yeah, he got it going. That's on. what we do. That's what we do. We got to support each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yeah. got to support each other. Nobody else gonna do it. Right. <laughs> so we got right. dead air. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Right. Uh, glad to have you guys on here tonight, and even uh, happy that you will be joining the discussion. Tonight, um, do you hate your boss? Does he or she constantly annoy you? Uh, do you hate coming to work because of them? Uh, Mr. Ellis, you said you're not a boss, but damn it, you're a boss, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yep, yep. When I let me clear that up. So, what I mean by that, I don't, I don't push my power. I, I, I make us all feel equal. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I know my position, but I don't throw it around. You know right. what I'm saying? Everybody mm-hmm. else in my position. I just don't push that around. We, you know, what I mean, I just make us feel all the same because that's how I see it. You know what I'm saying? So that's all what it is. But I, I don't have a, a, a like a, a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? So this is really all I do. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can't really. I guess I could tell somebody else's story about if they hit their boss because I see it all the time. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I see it all the time. So, so since we got. Nothing but bosses on here for the most part. Um, put yourself in somebody else's shoe. All right, if that's if, if you can do that, or your last job or anything. Uh, I, oh Lord, y'all girl on Hill it on it. How did y'all? How did you guys feel? Did y'all like y'all? Did y'all like your boss? <laughs> My my last nine to five that I had, my boss was cool until she wasn't cool. But I felt like if um if MS wouldn't have happened, I would have never went full time, full time. But once I came back from that MS, it's at this point it's been almost seven years since I've been um working for myself with the different businesses that I have. Um, but prior to that, my boss was cool, my last boss, but I've never been the type to really take direction full force like that. Like, I always was, like, more rebellious than anything. So, oh, shit. Oh, I, I shit. Couldn't really, like, so I worked at a juvenile detention center. That was my last job before. I was an um, art therapist and a counselor. Um, so I used to just do me for real and have fun, but... Um, it would it would be times where I just was but like be real rebellious, like, oh my walkie stop working, oh I'm good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no not to play with me. Or, you know, they I wanna go take a smoke break and they like, Well, what you need a break for? Like, I'm gonna be out here. You want me sign my write up when I get back in the door, I have my pan ready type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that's just always been me. So I guess it was just always meant for me to work for myself because that's just been my mentality. So but um I don't know, like. Uh, I, I just <laughs> um, 
because I work, you know, a seven to three. So, like I said, I'm in the infrastructure infrastructure uh, business where we put new pipe line, pipe in the ground, you know, fire hydrants and stuff like that. And I've been in this job for 17 years. Now, mm-hmm. as far as a boss, you know, we got superintendents, we got foremen, so we got a couple of different bosses. You know, I don't really have nobody that I have a problem with. And like I said, for 17 years, certain people, if they say something I don't like, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm going to go to whoever else I need to go to mm-hmm. so that I don't have a problem, you know. But, like, the the boss of the whole, well, I'm going to say the boss of the company that's here in Baltimore, I love him to death. I mean, because yeah. I want to say his back has been, I flipped the dump truck over. You oh, know wow. I mean? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they they use the jaws of life to cut out everything. And he was yeah. the only person that came see me in the hospital. You know what I mean? Pause from the jaw. You know, so pause the boss. Like I said, I've been in this job for 17 years. Oh. You know what I mean? So I love it. You know, I mean, everybody got to each his own. Everybody got their problems or whatever. But it's all about, see, like this. I say I'm, I'm there for 17 years for the simple fact I love what I do. When you love what you do, the hardest part for me is waking up in the morning to go to work. That's Absolutely. because I really love what I do. When I get to work, it's all fun and dandy. I love it. Yeah, that's how I was. The yeah. work part is easy. It's the dedicating your life away from what you want to be doing for your own business, you know? Yeah, but like right. I say, for, my, for me, 7 and 3, okay, at 3 o'clock, I got time to do whatever I want to do after that. Yeah, that was a great so people wake up 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, something like that, you know? So. Mm-hmm. At three o'clock, it's time for me to do whatever I need to do. Done. Yeah. Well, I can speak on that. Um, I always say that people don't quit jobs; they quit bosses. Yeah. And, um, I was in the medical field for fourteen years, and I absolutely love my job. I um help women get pregnant. That was my last job, and I just felt like my boss, like she was a nitpicker, and you never really felt appreciated. Mm-hmm. So even though I didn't like her, I feel like I want to thank her because without her, I probably wouldn't have done my own business. She was the one that made pushed me to do what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's the reason I left and started this. Let, let me read, please, please let me read um, Mr. Tage's comment. <laughs> Amen to the right. Amen to that one right there. He says some people like power tripping, but I'm not going to start. Uh, Miss Forbes, I'm only cool with two of mine if they would treat everyone the same and not just a few. Um, let, let, I, I'm going to respond to Miss Miss uh, Shatasia, right? So I'm I'm not a boss. I'm a supervisor, not a boss, right? And I tell people this. I was chosen out of a group of individuals to help uh, with the structure and integrity of the department. That's it. I'm not a boss. You know, I'm just a supervisor. I'm someone who helped with the integrity of the job and see things through. Now, I will say this. As a black supervisor, the hardest part of my day are black employees. Absolutely. I'm sure. Black employees. They take they take four to five lunch breaks. But none of those count. None of those count until they actually get to their lunch break, whenever that is. Black right. lunch matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is the, it's the, hard, the hardest thing in the world is being a black supervisor and um uh, supervising black employees. And I'm going to tell you, there's so many different things with this. One of the things is over top of me is a, is my, my boss. He's a white man. Mm-hmm. And you will be you can disrespected by black employees. If you can tell them, hey, look, you can't do that. It's in the handbook. This is the rules, regulation. These are the policies. You can't do that. They will exactly. yell at you. They will lose their mind. They will walk out. They will throw temper tantrums. They say, you know what? I want to speak. I want to speak to so and so. I want to speak to who over you. And they'll go in the room with that white man. And they will sit down and go, yep, yes, sir. Yeah, I understand, sir. Well, that's all he had to say. And and come out and they will give you, this, bring your to this. give you this dirty ass look. I told you the same thing that white man said. Right. 
Exactly. So, and you what, probably said it better than a white man said it. Right. But because oh, it's coming from you, you know, the problem is it's coming from you. So they right, exactly. At it. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going I'm to I'm say this. Um, I don't have them problems. <laughs> when I say I don't have them problems, because my thing is I'd rather deal with the black man than the white man. And my thing is I work mm-hmm. on a job with two of the, both of these guys right here and they're my supervisors. And I'd rather deal with them um, instead of going um, to the other person that's over top of them. So most of the time when they ask me to do something or if I so-called get myself in some kind of trouble and they talk to me, you know, the, you know, the buck stops there. Um, but my problem when it comes to bosses or supervisors, um, my thing is sometimes when it comes to supervision and or so-called bosses, you know, um, the problem that I run into is sometimes they don't know how to speak to people that they supervise or sometimes it or the boss, they don't know how to speak to you. And the thing about it is. One thing I can say for myself, I try not to be disrespectful when they're telling me, you know, things and what what I need to do on the job. But we run into the ones that want to talk to you like you're their child. And that's Mm -hmm. the problem that I have. You know, um, I feel like this. You can tell me what you need to tell me, but tell me in a way that it's going to be respectful. Because my thing is, if I don't disrespect you, don't disrespect me. I don't care what authority that you have over top of me. Right. The only person that really has any authority over me is God himself. So my thing is, if I come to you and you want to speak to me about something that I did that's incorrect, then talk to me like a human because I'm going to give you that same respect. But if you're going to disrespect me or talk to me like I'm beneath you, then yes, we're going to have a problem. And I'm going to right, deal with right. you like that. You know, so, um, and I had the, the moments when I had to, you know, come outside myself and say some things to somebody that was over top of me, you know. So it's not that the fact um, that I hate my boss. You know, do I hate my job? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I hate my job because I want to work for myself. You know, I'm taught to um, work for myself and not work for somebody else. If I can get up every day and go to a job and make them rich, then I can do that for myself. So I'm in a moment in time that I'm fighting for my struggle to do for self, to always do for self. So do I hate my job? Yes. Do I hate my boss? No. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, Miss <Yeah>. Savannah. <laughs> we went off real quick, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, the you white man must be watched, though. You know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with Lindsay on that one. I'm, I'm, I'm not a boss. I'm a supervisor, but um, and we supervise, you know, uh, hundreds of people. But I don't see me as the boss. I work with you. You work with me. I represent you. So in other words, I'm serving you as the employees, as, as who is with me. If you don't look good, I don't look good. So I got to make sure you look good. You understand what I'm saying? Some of these other supervisors that I've known don't care about that and, and don't realize or don't, does not grasp the fact that um, a bad employee means you're a bad boss. You understand what I'm saying? So if all my employees, if all my, my, my you know, the people I work for, people I serve, uh, are, are great, are good, I can get them ahead, then then I look good with them. You understand what I'm saying? Then then we look we look good as a team. I'm I'm I basically don't see me as the boss, the overseer, no. Um I'm just the one chosen to lead the the, the, the team to you know for eight hours we go in there, we do what we gotta do and we get out. You understand what I'm saying? Hey man, put your uniform on, you're making all of us look bad. Not just me. You're making your, your your fellow employees look bad. You know, we we got to represent. You know what I mean? After that, wear what the hell you want. You know what I'm saying? You only got to wear this monkey suit. You only got to wear the monkey suit for eight hours. Come on now, unless you're doing the double, you wear it for sixteen. But you chose that. Um, and that's it. My hardest thing is everybody want to be rocking what they want to rock. And come on now, I you think I like wearing the uniform? Hell no. None of us like. I rock some major figures any day to go to work. <laughs> you know but, um, what? I mean, me on the outside looking in, just listening to what yeah. y'all saying, it's like, it's not the problem. I think the problem is really that you become friends with them because you're in your coworkers or whatever, and they get comfortable. They get comfortable. And then when you got to do your job to enforce the law or whatever, if you want to say it, they get upset. Because they're not looking mm-hmm. at it as the aspect of you being the supervisor. They're looking at it as you like their friend, whatever. 
So yeah, from, from just, like, just coming down on them kind of hard when really, if y'all was never friends, it would have been okay. Right. But like I said, because y'all friends, it's like, they looking at like, you shouldn't have said it to me like that. Something like that. You know what I mean? But I don't you know mean, what about bosses um, that push the narrative that they want to be your friend? That's why right. I don't like being friends with bosses. Right. <laughs> right. You right. don't get it. <laughs> right. But I also think it comes with maturity. You know what I mean? I think like, if you're mature enough to be able to um, so-called be a friend with your um, your supervisor or your boss, and you have to understand when it's work, it's work. It's, it's not. It's nothing personal, and that comes with maturity. Like I work with both of both of my supervisors, but when I go to work, it's Mr. Lindsay, and it's Mr. Um, whatever your name you can is. Say, you can say. You can say. It, you know what I mean? <laughs> and sometimes that carries over because um, Mr. Lindsay always getting on me about calling him Mr. Lindsay, you know, because that's just how I am. It's out of respect. But right. you have to know where the line is. I know that they are my supervisors. So when we get to, when we go to work and um, something that I need to do and they need to tell me, I'm going to fall right in line. You know, I'm right. not going to be like, oh, well, we buddies, we work together, we hang. No, I'm not going to do that because I know my place when it comes to that. So it has to um, be with maturity and it has to go both ways. You can't feel like because you're my supervisor and we outside of the uh, work place and we do one thing and then we come back because we cool you can treat me like that because if i'm gonna fall back in line you have to do the same thing right. so i think that comes with respect and maturity that's just my opinion yeah. absolutely. absolutely yeah and, I, and my thing i don't like telling people what to do i want you to understand what you have to do. so mm -hmm. i'll explain it to you because if you understand what you're doing and the reason why you're doing it it's easy to do it you would you would want to do it but if, if if I tell you, well, you got to do it because I tell you got to do it. No, nah, that's uh, we we don't work we don't rock like that, you know. If, so and that's why I don't have issues with my employees because they understand what they have to do, and how it benefits the team and how it benefits you know the whole um, you know work uh, you, agency altogether. <laughs> so it, it, it's one of them things where where I'll take the time to explain it to employees. Um, but if you're hard headed, man, sometimes you got to get in that zone. <laughs> Oh, and I swear, some of my, my issues, like, you know, like Lindsay said earlier, some of his issues was, is with, the you know, the black um employees. Some of my issues is actually with the older employees. Not so much the, 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 the younger ones, but the older ones, you know. And, and, you know, getting back on topic, hate me a boss? Yeah, I, I love my job. I love the people I work with. I just hate the, the BS we get from above, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say it on here if you're watching. I hate the BS we get from above. Because they don't see us, they don't see our employees as, you know, Mr. Ellis, uh, Mr. Guy, Ms. Fisher. They see a number, you know, and that's all they see is the employee number. Me working in between that, I know you. I know you. I know what you're capable of. I know you might have an off day today, you know, but these guys, hey, you're not doing it? Get them the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we, we, we don't do that. This, this person might be going through some stuff right now. And, and man, they're all human. Come on now, you know. But yeah, I hate my bosses. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. It sounds like you know. To be honest, just keep it one hundred. If you're outside right. the job and you got a problem, don't bring it to work. Mm -hmm. You'll take out on your employees, like same from supervisor, boss, or whomever. You know, then you might. I mean, I don't know. Just maybe like you made that employee from something on the outside, so maybe you put them on a different job or you make them do something extra that you normally wouldn't do because you're mad at them. Like you know, keep that shit. When it's off work, it's off work or whatever, you know. I ain't gonna right, lie. Right, I ain't right. gonna lie. When I became a supervisor, I thought I would I would be sexually harassed a little bit more than what I, I had. <laughs> <laughs> so, <I'm laughs> tremendously disappointed. Okay. <laughs> I just want to throw that. Tell me that you're gonna you tomorrow. Oh, oh my lord! All right, that, you know, bring them snacks, oh. baby. Bring them snacks. Mm -hmm. Snacks. <laughs> oh boy. Nah, but I, 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 I'm with uh, PRS one. Um, uh, being in the middle is tough because, um, yeah, I, I don't care for my boss. You know, uh, I feel the same way as my employees do. Sometimes I come into work and I have a good time. I laugh, joke all day long. You know, but. I have a responsibility. I got to do payroll. I got to get the schedule ready for the next day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm responsible to make sure people eat at a certain time or at least eat before the end of the day. And Because um, black lunch matters. 
know? So you, you be stressed out, and then you know you, you you catch that black shade, and I hate that black shade. That black, I <laughs> I, yeah, I hate that black shade because that's one of the things I never did. I never wanted to um, make my uh, black superior day hard because I already knew he was or he or she was already in a tough position. You you, you dig what I'm saying? Um, so I, the last thing I wanted to do would be a pain when I know he already got several pains. He or she already got several pains. And uh, I, I always found it easier to work for a female supervisor than a male supervisor. You have a, I don't know what it is. I love women bosses. I, just, I get along well with them. I don't mess with them. I already understand their position is tough, but then you turn around, you're a supervisor. Oh my goodness, if she's a black woman. You already know her shit is hard. So I didn't, I just did my job and I didn't want to stress, add to their day, this stressful day more than, than what I needed to, you know? But uh, yeah, I hate my boss. Uh, I, I I will call the fuck off if I have to. Yeah, you know, you know that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mental, you, need, you need a mental break day. You know right. that is, right. if you, when you tell employees that they think you know it, it's a setup. You're joking, but you need a mental health day. You know what I'm saying? Look, just because your boss or your supervisor have tough days doesn't mean you don't have a tough day. You can have a lot of shit going on in your life. You know, then you got to come to work and deal with all the shit at work. You know, and in our job, you know, you got like 30 damn different departments that we interact with, not just us, but our employees. So if you need a mental health day, take one. Shit, take two if you have to. You dig what I'm saying? And I, I, I stress that to people because it's important. You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure you're good. You got to make sure you're right. right. You know what I'm saying? Before you do anything else. You know what I mean? Make sure you're good. If you need a mental health day, take that. Take it. Because I promise you. Uh, L will take one or two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Miss Dallas, you've been quiet down there. You got something to say? I mean, he I, been he been firing motherfuckers as we've been talking. So I I had a job since like maybe like 2012. You know what I'm saying? I really just been building my brand, you know what I'm saying? And so I really can't really dive in there, you know what I'm saying? I can't really, I understand it. Cause I got friends that just, they don't like what they do, man, and they ain't happy. You know what I'm saying? They ain't happy at all, you know what I'm saying? All I say is, man, listen, if you got a job, I think you should have a side business. I think you should use your job to fund your side business. You right. know what I mean? And keep, you keep building that side business until you can quit that job. Like uh, the foot soldier, um, the, the pretty little foot soldier. <laughs> What's her name? Miss um, Fisher, Miss Fisher. Miss Fisher, like Miss Fisher did. You know what I'm saying? Like she came up with the, and I'm going to support you too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? That's what I think it's about. It's about building, like like building, you need a job to fund your business. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I see it. And you can go from there. But I think behind all that, you're definitely going to have to read some good books. Because you might not be surrounded around motivation every day. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. When you be surrounded right. around that motivation every day, guess what guess what that motivation that is in them books? It's in that YouTube mm-hmm. video. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Every day I wake up, I listen to Jim Ron or 50 Cent new book, which is called Hustle Hard, Hustle Smarter. You know what I'm saying? I take those mm-hmm. jewels and apply it to my life. Mm-hmm. Knowledge is power only when it's applied. I used to wonder why so many smart people was broke. But then right. I figured it out. Mm-hmm. Knowledge is only it's powerful when applied. You gotta Absolutely. apply that knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Apply that knowledge. You can be a smart dude that everybody go to to get good good advice from. But you yeah, that's the word. Know. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly the word. And and, and 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 that's just how I see it. You know what I'm saying? And like I ain't blowing smoke. I live it. You know what I'm saying? Every day, every day I'm doing something. Every day I'm getting creative. You know what I'm saying? And I look at my brand as like it's gonna be bigger than just clothing. I'm mm-hmm. talking about we done walked into the electronic world. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. There's some things that I got coming for Christmas that I can't speak about right now, but it's going right. to shock the world. You know what I'm saying? It's about pushing and building. And when you build and you build and you lead in a certain way, people will follow you. But I'm a leader, but I also follow. I follow great leaders. There you go. I like that. I like that. Follow great leaders. And I always go by the term of if a leader stops learning, then a leader should stop leading. Because you can only lead a person as far as you done got. 
So you, right. if you that's stop learning, right. you need to stop leading because you can't, or the person that's following you, you need to go past it. Right. You know right. right. You gotta right. keep seeking that knowledge every single day. I don't care how old you is. Just keep All working. Right. And that's how. So I like to say, you used to work at Hopkins. So let us know about how your experience was, and did you like your boss when you worked at Hopkins, or did you hate it, or what was going on with you? Why you leave? Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> She tried to put you on the spot, right? Huh? I said she tried to put you on the spot, right? She is. So my boss at Hopkins, the reason I left there is because everyone was treated differently. So as far as you bosses that's on here, do you guys treat all of your employees the same or? You can't. You can't. No. I do. No. I, I, give, I, I give all the same respect until I see something that needs to be adjusted. Like, if I see right. you operating differently, then I need to attend to that differently than how I attend yep. anybody else. And, and that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. You got to treat everybody with the same respect, but people will be treated differently because of the maturity levels and all bunch of different things. Yep. It's all about when they start switching up and doing things differently and not following. Right. Them, you got to get treated different. Now that's true, but, different. but what if you have a good employee and then you nitpick, but then another employee's not doing what they're supposed to, and the good employee comes to you and tells you, you don't do nothing about it. That's what was going on. Because one might have potential. The other one might just be a waste of time. (laughs) (laughs) Some people aren't good workers and they slack off and they get, they get away with it. You're right. And then the good worker is picking up their slack. A a person can only take with so much. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. And some bosses don't know how to deal with that. That's the whole thing. A lot of bosses don't. That's favorite too. Some of them, some of them lean harder on their people that they see they have that have more potential. Just like parents. Like if you have a handful of kids and you know you have that one go-to child that's going to get the job done, you're going right. to lean harder or be harder on them, not realizing that it's, it's overwhelming for that child. You know what right. I'm saying? Burning them out. Yep. Like being a bug. If you put too much on that one good employee, at some point they're going to burn out. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like you how to, like like you were saying with PRS one, yep. like all bosses don't know how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Right, it's like they right, get comfortable right. with leaning on that that main one or that one that's going to be more open to them being so hard on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's like they start to sometimes overstep. Like if you right. feel like, well, if I could talk to you like this and you're going to take it, then I know they might give me that tail to kiss, but I'm gonna take it easier on them because. You know, you're easier to deal with. Like I can dump right, on you right, more. Right. You know, and 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 sometimes as bosses, we we have the mission in front of us, and I need this done. And goofball over here might screw it up or whatever. I don't want to have an, an email. I don't want to have a, no issues or anything like that because we the kind of clients we have, you know, are, are you know sometimes feel entitled. So, right. but what I'll do, I know. I know employee A can do it. Right. I'll send him to do it you know, because I know it'll be done efficiently and fast. And I, I can some... get it done. And I'll deal with this joker later. You know what I'm <laughs> but at the same time, you're right. Sometimes we burn out employee A. You know, yeah. and, and it's one of those things where you're um, in a boss, you're kind of in that position where you have to pick the right time to be able to train employee B to be like employee A. You know exactly. it's, and sometimes it doesn't, doesn't work out like that sometimes. Yeah. So everybody does get treated differently. Yeah. For several reasons. Yeah. But yeah, so see, we, and going back to what Lindsay, Lindsay said earlier, um, I, you know, female bosses, I'm 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 lucky as hell, man. I'm lucky as hell. Oh, oh, a, on the night don't shift. Don't even talk about your shit. Don't even on talk about On the night about shift, that. I'm the don't only guy. I'm the only guy. I'm the only male. I'm spoiled. They spoil the hell out of me. These ladies spoil the hell out of me. So, that shit is ridiculous. He's not I'm even good. a boss. I'm good. He's not even a boss. <laughs> he's not even a boss. <laughs> he's, he's like a he's like what a, a, a secret shopper. He's just fucking there. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I have a um I have a question from someone. Miss mm-hmm. Davis want to know when you have a good worker that's been there for a long time and she ain't get her daggone white shirt yet, and you got people coming <laughs> in and getting their white shirt. She want to know what's the problem? What's the hold up? She need a white shirt. I'm just I got bleach. We, 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 I got awful bleach. That's the easiest fix. That's bleach. <laughs> That's the easiest fix. <laughs> That's too no, but, 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 but she's right. There's a lot of people that get overlooked. And sometimes me as a supervisor, I, I need to, sometimes I step back and I go, okay, 
some of these people are not getting the recognition they need to, and they've exactly. been there under the radar doing what they're supposed to do. Sometimes you have to step back and look. And yeah, we've given a couple people. Just this week, we were talking about issuing, you know, promotions to some certain people. And they're like, "Well, they're not doing anything. Exactly. They're not doing anything, but they're doing what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. And they're coming into work. That's enough. You understand what I'm saying? For years, they're doing it for years. You know, and 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 it's one of those things. If we do this, it might motivate them to do a little more. You know what I mean? Right. So what's the white shirts? Because Jordan was telling me about the white shirts. And I'm like, what? what's the difference? I just thought, you know, some people had yeah. white, had blue. Somehow a, a white shirt is a dollar more. <laughs> <laughs> man. So, so look, right. Look, look. So, no, man. It's, don't work hard. It's, so, with the white shirt. And I, and, and sometimes it's, it falls on, um, but it, it falls on supervision. Because mm-hmm. we, we, um, tend to look at the most difficult areas where people are at and you know that that's our ignorance you know instead of looking at areas we don't have, ever have to worry about it miss davis is one of those people who you know we tend to forget because it's where she's at she hold it down and she's been holding it down so well yeah. that we don't even change mind we know that day is going to be it's, it's going to be fine the day's going to be smooth mm-hmm. right? it's always with her but then you take a person like on a chef named shatasia Right, oh, who, yeah. you know, for whatever reason, that individual cost her name constantly come up in conversation, and there's nothing positive about this shit. <laughs> You're late. Uh, we can't find you. You're not answering the damn radio. Uh, your uniform is off. Your mouth is off. Shit like that. You know, I, me personally, I feel like. Damn, you should be lucky just to have a fucking job. <laughs> That's just me, you know. But and this is why she had a boss. <laughs> exactly. But but I because I keep the one hundred. That's why anybody <laughs> I keep the one hundred. I don't I don't like the sugar coat. I don't like to lead people down the yellow brick road and have them believe in one thing. And the, I will tell you straight up the truth, like yo, you's a fuck up, but you got a job, so be happy. I'll see you tomorrow. You know what I mean? Um, but we have to do a better job. With um, promoting people and acknowledging uh, 15, 17 years, years in the job, but you haven't had a promotion. Sometimes you got to talk to the right people. You can't always, you can't stay comfortable speaking to that right. one supervisor. You got to go and speak. Some to people that. don't take the initiative to try. Sorry to cut you off, but some people, like you said, 16, 17 years in that same position, like you can't always blame it, blame it on your. Your boss. Sometimes you gotta take that initiative to apply for that raise or ask about it, or you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So right, that's right a good right point people, you made. Right, right, people. right exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. some people. I, I, I'll say this. I'll say this, and I ain't gonna say no more about 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 this 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 right here. You have a lot of supervisors <laughs> who will entertain that conversation. Um just for brownie points, just to be cool with you, just mm-hmm. to have you believe that mm-hmm. they're on your side. Right. right? That's why I tell people, well, if you come to me and you ask me, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. You dig what I'm saying? You don't want to see everybody uh, succeed. I want to see everybody get whatever it is they think they want. But be careful because when you get that promotion, I'm going to expect a lot more out of you. Your ass go back on probation once mm-hmm. again. So mm-hmm. if you are one of those individuals who are habitually late or you have a smart ass mouth, you, you're putting yourself in a position to where you know, you, you've been there five or six years, you could be fired. But again, you'd be surprised. Go speak to the supervisor that you really don't have a, a, a dialogue with. You'd be surprised. That'd be the individual that gets you your promotion faster because, believe it or not, those people watch everyone. Right. Sometimes the people you closest with, yeah, they, they only watch who they watch because they close to them. Mm-hmm. They not, you know, they just trying to stay close. They just trying to stay cool. You dig what I'm saying? And feel right. like if they give you the promotion, some everybody going to be like, yo, the only reason you got that promotion is because so-and-so gave it to you. Mm-hmm. So they won't go through with it. And one of the biggest, cons- um, um, I guess what I've seen, you know, and heard from some of the employees, the biggest issue they have with some of their bosses and some of their supervisors is consistency. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bosses. We have four or five bosses on the shift and none of y'all consistent. You know, this guy will 
turn a blind eye to this, whereas this one would come down on it. You understand what I'm saying? It's it's like the supervisors are not on the same page, you know, and and you know it's, it's I've hear, I hear that a lot, you know, but each supervisor is different and they supervise differently. Absolutely. Well, I'm having a hard time going to work tomorrow. I can see this shit now. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right, we got about uh, five more minutes. We can start wrapping up. Let everybody get the you know their their, their ends in, and before Moan closed it off on us. Yeah, well, can, um, can Savonia, can I see your shirt? Because I mean, I can't even see you there, but I want you. I want people to be able to see the inside of what it's saying. <laughs> it's because I'm sitting low. I can't see oh. you. Yeah, we yeah, trying I'm to see this next. Low. I mean, um, your shirt. Yeah, what? I just want. I just want to. Can you read what it says inside of there? <laughs> on the inside of your shirt. Say what? What is what is it on the inside we of your shirt? We don't do things big. We do them major, major figures. Sound like a GI Joe uh, skit or something. Though. Right, right. <laughs> y'all can y'all see it? Y'all can't see it. We can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Just get my stuff right uh, before Friday, sir. But we gonna have a <laughs> major conversation. I love you. I love you. That's right. Yep. Make sure you get so, her major figures up and running perfect. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So, question. Um, I want to support you, bro. Um, guy, that's your name. And yeah. Miss Um Fisher. So Fisher. Miss Fisher. <laughs> Miss Soap. Yeah. I, I want to um, be able to, um, so y'all can give me y'all contact, um, y'all um, social media. I'm going to add y'all real quick. Mm -hmm. So um, when we um, when we finish, we always stay on a little bit. So y'all can probably get all the information when we go off. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, let's just don't um, log off. All right, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Right. So we um, we about to wrap up. So go ahead, um, Mr. Ramon, do your thing, do your thing. <laughs> All right, so this is the segment where everybody get a chance to uh, sell themselves to the public and to all our viewers. We'll start off with the ladies first. Miss Fisher, please let everybody know once again who you are and how they can get in contact with you and support you. Again, I'm the owner and creator of Bubbles Galore, natural handmade, um, <laughs> natural handmade soaps. Um, with essential oils. They smell amazing. They look amazing. Um, you can use them for gifts, yourself, just in a dish in your house. Um, yeah. And you can check me out at bubbles underscore galore underscore underscore on Instagram and my new website, www.bubblesgalorend.com. And thanks for having me on here, guys. No problem. No problem. We, we're glad to have you and your bubbles. <laughs> and my bubbles appreciate you. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> Miss Spaz. Yeah, so it's Spaz, aka the ghetto guru. Um, my brands are Defective Art and She Heals, which is my holistic health everything brand. Um, so y'all can hit me up, like I said, on Defective Art for any dope art, clothes, labels, whatever. Um, and also I sell the, under the She Hills, I sell the fruit. I have regular raw sea moss, which is blended. They say it's the best in the city. Um, I offer the fruit infusions where you can get different fruit blends. And I also um, do herbal boosters where I'll boost it with different er herbs like sour sap or... Um, if ginger, bladder rack, whatever you want. I do different herbal boosts to, medus the, to boost the medicinal properties of the sea moss. Um, so y'all can hit me up, like I said, Defective Art or She Hills. That's the best way to get in contact with me. And I appreciate y'all having me here today. I appreciate all of y'all. Um, at some point, y'all have supported um, Lindsay and Savanya. PR is one of them. I have to send some stuff y'all way. And thank you. This, this was dope. Um, and and it was nice to meet everybody else on here as well. Yeah. Keep pushing, keep doing y'all thing for real. That's what's you up. Too. Mr. Guy, Thank Mr. You. Guy, you up next, right. baby. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook at Major Figures, uh, Major Figures Guy. Thank you, thank you. And um, on Instagram is Major Figures underscore Guy. You know, and I appreciate y'all letting me come on. 
I really had a good time. I was kind of nervous at the beginning, you know, but thanks to this little bottle here and, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm good, but uh, yeah, I had a good time. And thank, you know, everybody, let's, I'm going to link up with everybody at the end so we can all interact with how we're going to do this. Mr. Alice, you up, baby? Mr. Alice is here, man. All right, Talk one damn more that. time. <laughs> yeah, right. Call for more damn time. You know? <laughs> y'all can reach me on um, on on Facebook at Ty Casello Ellis. Y'all can reach me at um, Instagram, True Struggle. That's it. You'll see my little logo character pop up. The True Struggle man. He's the warrior. And y'all can purchase anything that you would like on my website at www.truestruggle.com. And that's it. Nice, nice. All right, Miss Savvy. Miss Savvy, what's going on with you, girl? Well, y'all know I'm still working hard um, with my team November the 14th, 2020. Hopefully, we don't have to push it back no further. Um, fashion statement, too. Um, we're looking forward to that. Like I said, I have some other projects that's, that's on hold. Um, and also, um, I want to give a shout out to Miss Mona Lisa. She was our first customer. She brought out um, mug, so we're gonna get that out to you um, real quick. So thank you, Mr. Miss Mona Lisa, for that. And um, we have you know, mugs and stuff on sale, guys. So please support us. Please support us. We need that, that support right there. And um, I'm just looking forward to um, doing other things with um, Good Vibes um, Television and what we got going on with that. So yeah. PRS One, what's what's up, baby? What's up? How you right, feeling? Bro. How the legs feeling? Yeah, leg feeling good. I did that super dive off the roof earlier, but um, we'll share that later. <laughs> um, we need some I, of that sea lungs, bro. Right, right. I own, um, and that's how it's up. And that's how it's up. Um, I um, I basically, yeah, I work at. You all heard about me earlier about working at Hopkins, but um, I, what I really do, I am the owner and the CEO, director, of everything here at uh, Trinity Spice FM. Um, basically, run my own online radio station. Downstairs in my basement, um, Spice sick. FM. We listen. We we do a lot of Caribbean music. We don't do talk shows and stuff like that. It's all music, all vibes. Um, a lot of Caribbean stuff um, from all the islands. Check that out. The island, basically, we got all that stuff. I got a whole bunch of um, new DJs popping in and sending out stuff. Um, and we're on twenty four seven. You can download the app um, ah. on iOS and Android. Um, it's free, free app. You just pop, download the Trinity Spice FM app. And you basically just hit it. Music is is running. Um, I think I got it set up in a way where even when you try to turn your phone off, it'll still be running. But <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the glitches I heard, but um, that's not on us, really. Um, we're also on the TuneIn app. You can listen to us there. Um, Simple radio app. Um, even on your Alexa devices. You just go into the Alexa skill store, uh, enable Trini Spice FM, and you just say, hey, Alexa, enable Trini Spice FM. She just did it anyway. Um, <laughs> so basically, um, yeah, that's it for me. Um, we rocking Good Vibes TV. We got these mugs in development at the moment, so we'll be get those out to a lot of people. And um, that's what we do. Uh, Mo, it's all yours. Uh, well, I my company's Royal Legend. Uh, I've been doing podcasts for about six years. I have uh, another talk show called The Lounge. Um, this summer, I have. Uh, my, my first book will be done. It's called um, Why Good Men Hate Women. And uh, by the end of the year, I'm, I'm hoping and praying to have another book done called The Experienced Lover. Um, I'm just real excited about the GVTV, what we got going on here. Um, we got a billboard coming up next. We got a photo shoot. Uh, we got a lot going on. I'm having a whole lot of fun with PRS1 and Savvy. Uh, appreciate all the support that everybody gives us. I want to give a special shout out to one of our supporters, Mr. Atia Betrayan, who uh, is constantly on our page supporting us, and she has not missed the show. Neither has Miss Shadesia Hillett. Uh, Hill is a good friend. I love Hill. She's just a pain in the ass. She's not really a good employee. You throw that out there. Um, <laughs> got Mike McCoy. Yeah, and, and Mike McCoy. So I definitely want to thank everybody who's been supporting us. And uh, I think we're almost at uh, we're over 2,000 people on our page, and we've only been up for about three or four weeks. So it just goes to show the kind of content we have on our page. We just don't put anything on there. You know, we, we try to put some uh, enlightening stuff on there, some motivating stuff on there. Um, 
at the same time, I want to thank Mr. Alice, Ms. Fisher, Spaz, and Mr. Guy for coming on the show. Um, trust and believe, I'm going to reach out to each one of y'all, and I'm going to support you guys. Um, your man said something a few weeks ago, and he, he was dead on uh, Logan about uh, money exchanging, going from black, one black hand to another black hand to another color hand, and try to keep it in that, you know, in our circle, you know what I mean? And just build up our own uh, economy and try to, you know, just support each other and keep us going and moving forward. You know, not just for us, but for our children and the generation uh, down the road. Um, stay positive, everybody, with what's been going on. And it's been going on for years, man. And uh, just just, just stay within yourself. Stay, stay, stay grounded and uh, don't let any of this negativity get to you. Um, I want to thank again everybody for tuning in. Uh, till next week. Peace. We out.